How's it going everybody? Welcome to Zoobox. I'm Sean and today I got another little quick off-the-cuff movie review. Today we're going to be talking about the recently released David Ayer film, The Beekeeper. Yes, that's right. Jason Statham action film released in January. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Sometimes though, surprisingly, they're pretty good. Every once in a while, you know, you got to put on that dad core cinema glasses you got to put those, those, those on, and you're going to be good. You're going to be all right. Now, does, does, does the beekeeper achieve dad core cinema status? And dad core cinema status is very forgiving. It's very forgiving. Can I recommend this to my fellow dad corers dad out there, dad core cinema lovers out there? Can I recommend this in good conscience? Uh, yes and no. Um, it's pretty bad. Like, it's a very shoddy movie with moments of brilliance, moments of things that are so crazy and so stupid that you can't help but kind of appreciate it on some level. Um, I, I really, honestly, it's one of those things I was like watching the movie and I kind of don't understand uh, signing on to the script, <laughs> to agreeing to make this movie. And David Ayer, that guy, that poor son of a bitch, he's been beaten down so much He's been beaten down so hard. He needs a win so bad, and this is not the one. This is not the one. I think, like I said, I think you can kind of split the difference with it in terms of it being part of the dad core cinema catalog. It's, it's got that cheesiness. It's got a few decent action set pieces. Jason Statham is starting to look a little old. I'm not going to lie. And I don't say that to throw shade or be weird or anything like that he's just looking old he's just looking old man like i'm starting to not believe that he can karate chop a thousand guys um but there is stuff i kind of appreciated about the movie though is how straightforward it is with its contrivances and how fucking stupid it is it really doesn't care it does not care that you know that it's stupid it knows that it's stupid there is a little bit of self-awareness there it's just that it is populated with very forgettable characters and uh in a, in a in a revenge plot that is i don't know it's just so weak it's so impersonal you know jason statham who is the uh <laughs> the titled character the beekeeper uh he's like keep he's you know he's like a spook he's an old fucking ninja spook worked for the government or something like that it's actually never very clear what he did um and in his retirement or what, what he does for relaxation is he likes to keep bees to do that. He had to like, he has to rent property. So he rents property from uh, Bill Cosby's wife from the Cosby show. Her name's escaping me at the moment. She's been around. She's been around more and more often lately. She's a good actress too. So I, I can see why, but she's kind of given this role to be like a doddering old woman that gets basically uh, scammed by crypto bros. Yeah, they have like a call center. They're all mass calling old ladies, elderly men, trying to scam them out of their lives, life savings, etc. You've heard these stories before. It's just a very ramped up, vamped up one of these kinds of stories. And uh, so she she gets her life ruined in like 15 minutes during a, a phone call. Somebody claiming to be like a, an IT person. There's something wrong with their computer. All of their money's drained, all of their savings. They were also like a trustee on a board that had access to a bank account. That gets drained. It's like $2 million. Out of despair, she ends up committing suicide. This this, the beekeeper can't have that. He's very upset. And he goes on basically a revenge, revenge spree. And there's no mystery. He never actually has to figure out who did it. He knows who did it almost immediately. He goes directly to their offices and confronts them within like 25 minutes of the movie. So there's not a lot to hang on to. And there's a B plot with the daughter of the elderly woman that killed herself. And she's a cop and she's like a tough, she's a tough lady cop. Okay. She's a tough lady detective. Excuse me. She's out there here ready to solve some crimes. And uh, her and her idiot partner are like, they're trying to figure it out. That's the mystery part. And also trying to figure out, well, who's doing all of these attacks on these, on these, you know, crypto bro places? Well, it's the beekeeper, you know? It's got a little bit of like a, kind of like a bad version of an equalizer kind of story. That's what, it's like a rejected script for like the equalizer four. 
Um, everything that those Equalizer movies gets right, especially the first and the third one, uh, this one kind of gets wrong in that in that respect. But as like a, but it is it's very generic. I couldn't recommend like going to a theater to watch it or paying an exorbitant amount of money. Um, don't go to the theater like I did. It was just desperation. It was boredom. I needed to get out of the house, and sometimes there's nothing else to do than go to a movie. You know, I can, I can get into a theater, and watch a movie, and only spend like twelve bucks. You know, trying to save some money in 2024, and um, so that's why I ended up seeing it. I couldn't recommend other people do the same. If once it shows up on a streaming service or something, though, and you are, you know, you're a dad core cinema enjoyer. I think you're you're not going to love it. It's not going to be you're not going to remember it. Honestly, I watched it like a week ago and I'm already struggling to remember the plot. Like I almost when I started this diatribe, I had almost completely forgotten about the detective daughter cuz it's it's so insignificant and it's so stupid and it's just cuz they just the script is bad and there's just nothing there. There's just no fucking there there. There's no meat and I was almost kind of shocked. David Ayer, I got to bring this up. I kind of talked about a little bit of the front. David Ayer got the shit kicked out of him, and he is just a demoralized, broken director. And this movie is like, could have been directed by anybody. By anybody. It is completely anonymous, and it's very, like, workmanlike in a way that I was shocked by. It reminds me of movies that come out on, like, Tubi. Outside of some of the set pieces, because they obviously had a little bit more money, and Jason Statham is a little bit more enigmatic and just kind of. You know, we like the celebrity of Jason Statham. He's much more watchable than a lot of these guys in these direct to, you know, direct to streaming action movies. The ones that don't start giant celebrities like Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> um, it just reminded me of one of those. It's, it's just, and I was kind of befuddled the whole time. I was like, I was just like, wow, is this really, ha is this really, ha am I, is this a real fucking movie? I felt like almost like I was, a prank was being played on me sometimes looking around the theater be like did somebody fucking that works at this theater like splice in something they shot with their friends with the footage from the actual movie the beekeeper with jason statham like what is going on um i mean and he did this movie a couple years ago with like shia labeouf where he got him to like get up tattoos and become a cholo and i thought that was bad I thought that was, like, in terms of... I mean, just from a director's perspective, like, you know, David Ayer, say what you will, but he did have a voice. Uh, he did have some chops, but Suicide Squad, that broke that fucking guy. That broke him. <laughs> he had a one of the most successful movies the year it came out, uh, and he still got kind of put in director's jail because the, the reviews were so bad. And uh, then he spent... <laughs> and then the studio kind of made all these fake promises to him that they were going to, like... Let him direct more DC movies, so he played ball and didn't pretend like the studio didn't really disclose that the studio was behind the scenes, pressuring him and fucking him and being like, "No, just fucking toe the line, dude. Just toe the line. We're gonna, you're gonna be fine. Just come out and tell people this is your your vision. This is your director's cut. Just toe the line. Just go along." And he did that for years afterwards too. It wasn't until like the past year and a half, maybe two years, that he's been like more explicitly being like, they took my movie, a trailer company edited it, they fucked the tone up, they took away a lot of the darkness, they added Eminem songs and blah, blah, blah. And they did. I'd be interested in seeing an air cut of uh, Suicide Squad. I don't think it's fundamentally going to make that movie like a lot better. Or it'll be, but it'll be different. And I think it'll probably be more coherent. Like there's, you're actually going to be able to, has like a, a point of view and a vision to it. Uh, the, I mean, the Suicide Squad one they put out in the theater feels like a movie cut together by people that make trailers. <laughs> it really does. Um, what else? What else is there to say about, about old, the old beekeeper? Uh, yeah, no, I don't really have any more deep thoughts. Like, just wait for uh, wait for it to be on streaming. I think you'll at least you won't feel like you're you've wasted your money or your time if you if you wait for that. Um, I don't know. I, I you know I didn't I I went in with no expectations either. I was actually kind of just hoping for a decent a decent dad core movie, a decent like action movie that I could kind of just shut my brain off and watch. But when movies get so contrived and so stupid and so bad that I can't 
help but just pay attention to that aspect of it more than the movie itself. I start, as I'm watching the movie, looking at the architecture of the movie and thinking about the acts and thinking of the characters and thinking of the script, and you're going to have a bad time if you do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be like me. Don't drink Mountain Dew and go see movies. All ramped up. All hopped up on Mountain Dew. Anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, if you'd like to know more about Zoobox, there's a bunch of links in the description. Also, don't forget, we now do a live uh, kind of movie entertainment um, live stream or show, podcast, whatever you want to call it, uh, called Goes to the Movies Live. I, uh, I do it with my buddy Jeremy. Every other Thursday we get together, talk about entertainment news, talk about... Uh, Whatever, whatever else is going on, we will look at trailers. We usually pick a movie to review. This, you should see this before then. This, the, the next episode is going to be about uh, Stephen King's Rob Reiner's Misery. And we're looking forward to talking about it. So uh, make sure to stop by. All right. You guys have the best one ever. Stop. Stop.